don't want. Yeah, that sounds great. Beautiful, brother. Nice to see you again. Nice to hear you again. It's been a few weeks now, but um, yeah, I hope you're well. Yeah, it's just, it's great. Lots of surfacing and clarifications, everything. How is the dream life in Italy? Yeah, you know what? Just the same as you. Um, cracking open in ways I didn't realize could crack open, maybe. Um, just like the script just seems to be gifting things of um, really the fears which have really been stagnant and kind of pushed aside. I forgot I even had some of these fears and then they would come up and it was a very obvious that it was just a, a kind of a thought um trying to really make it my thing my thing but then just this kind of transmutation again um that that yeah ultimately it's just a real i think the spirit just keeps bringing things up you know you can only really bite and chew what you can really fit in your mouth kind of thing which sounds <laughs> strange to say <laughs> but it's like i think that's why it's so humorous is like yeah it just it's just giving me and and all of us just things that we're just about capable of transmuting so yeah it's just really trusting that process i think even when the emotions get um seemingly a big thick gravitational pull it's like all about that impersonality the context of what this really is and and really resisting that need to make it about me and, and stuff like that so it's mm. it's cool How, how's it been with um over the atlantic dreamland yeah well first the capabilities really resonates because i think that's spot on it's just like you're always given what you're capable now so i think just beautiful reflection of that just coming forth um with with it feel it can feel intense right so I think even now the last few days have been kind of it, it's a different flavor it felt like more in the head space it just feels like the concealed vibration seemingly is like here and it wants to get pulled out but as soon as the body woke up it just felt like oh, okay dreamland dreamland and just enjoying just the camaraderie and the points with other uh other bodies and just kind of remembering the purpose of it so the the sense of shared purpose is like it always gets clear because it feels like the my part always seems really personal and real but then like in retrospective harvesting it always comes back into just like this it's just like it was perfect for the extraction so yeah. i don't know if you want to vibe with that it's beautiful yeah it's, it's like the cycle is like you i was it's funny when you go into the cycle of transmutation the stuff cut, coming up and then once you get it's almost like the momentum of coming back around it's like oh very clear now why that was there what was uprooted um the context it's almost like every time the cycle comes back around you gain more and more trust in the process of these cycles that when you start off on the path it's very much oh what, what's the what are these what's this coming up it's mine it's my trauma it's this and i never want to feel this again and it's almost like the theme of that last deepening was about how the fuel of all of this is what we're after and then it becomes like even now to be honest when i'm when i'm in the thick of something it feels intense there is sometimes a subtle forgetting of the fuel and it's very much let's just feel this to kind of move it on and that's a slight resistance on on the true transmutation but ultimately it gets quicker and quicker in the realization of just the just the thickness of it that transmutes and everything we're looking for really is in the transmutation of it so you know i've so many years of, of trying to put it off that it's like it's perfect now i think it's a symbol of you know you living there and me moving there it's like we all just want this now so it, it kind of shortens the gap of remembering why this is here and then not resisting it and really just letting it engulf you each time but yeah it's a trip like it's very real feeling this world at times the dream yeah yeah definitely the sense of contraction and expansion always it just keeps getting ramped up like even what seems to be like a, an hour of like just extreme like hatred or anger or sadness like these roller coasters of emotions could just like be bottled up seemingly in the body but not really it's just in the field somehow like it'd be seemingly triggered by another point but even that just gets folded in into the realization that that is exactly what we want because it's just the, the spirit's way of just pointing highlighting it in our awareness to see that it needs to be transmuted and it's perfect for the field like as long as we like we reflect back and we talk about it it's just in the deeper clarification it gets 
it gets revealed in that way. So like you said, like we want this as much as we can and it gets faster, more efficient. And just, we kind of get in tune with what we are here for the shared purpose of all the coming together. And yeah, the proximity of just more and more points joining and even, I mean, we're doing this on zoom, but it's just, it's perfect. It's like, really, you could get so much depth and transmutation through just doing this. Mm. Yeah. When you take away the distance belief, the just the thought that's overlaid of all these images of as if there's distance, it's it's crazy. Like I was on, I did that meeting today, just Space for Grace every Thursday. And, and just the power of just kind of opening to the fact that it feels as though we really are on this big floating rock, that you're on a different side of the things and and this and this. But without that memory of what we've learned or or tried to learn that that there is distance and there is time, it really is just a holographic field where you you appear right here i who i think i am appears right here and we put it out into this like mosaic of like out there but there's just everything we ever know every location exists here you know not in this brain but like in in the one mind so it's just like when you see through that you see through like any kind of distance and that's why i think the transmutation is so powerful for the whole of the field because it's not like if someone's in London, they're helping everyone in London. It's it's very much the, everyone in the one mind is so deeply connected and seamlessly um, not apart that your transmutative work is an invite for anyone to to really, you know, it touches them instantly, whether they know it or not in the unconscious. It's, it's you know, that I always, I always butcher the phrase, but it's like a rising tide lifts all ships. It's like no one is unaffected by any of the work. So I found that to be really powerful, that there is a true purpose, like use the word purpose. And I think there just is such an intense purpose, whereas before it felt quite empty of, it just felt like a, a personal awakening, but it's so much deeper than that. We don't even realize. Like, nice. I mean, you, you showed me this with the law of one and stuff, and what, what really the context really now for what it is. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I like that. What you mentioned too, with just the belief of distance or, or time, like it, it's always what's in front of you. And like you mentioned that a few times during deep, and that was great. Just like the connections through that, and even if it seems to be like your body's in London and I'm here in. Uh, North Carolina, the sense of just the interactions do have this environmental transportation value that kind of gets into other associations that are perfect too. It's like it can be through like past lives or a sense of male female dynamics, male male dynamics, and that's beautiful too because it's not just the location. But sometimes for me, I mean, at least coming through location, it does help me with the seeming process. It goes into the layers of like okay what happened last deepening or what happened with my interactions with matt last time or something i mean it is in a sense past learning but in the context of transmutation like everything becomes used for that fuel of of just guidance like mm. if something sticks out in the field of experiencing like if someone's there seemingly um saying something or doing something and there's an irritation in in this body and central nervous system it feels like that has to be addressed and same thing with, I guess, like talking in in live or in Zoom. It's like, it's so beautiful that that really is this present moment. And the holographic uh, analogy or truth of that is that every little speck really always reflects the whole every time, every interaction, every thought can be used to, to be seen as this is what I want and all the things that have been repressed can be shown to another example earlier like I saw a old friend earlier and there's just a sense of like wow I haven't seen her in a while but then like a judgment of why is there sensation or experience there like there's so much that could be said just non-verbally um, and even associations with different appearances but this sense of it's okay just like let it be felt and just like unpack it later but there's also there's there could be a judgment of what happened before like it could have been better like this this like critical element of it so yeah. yeah it's completely like so parallel with the experience i had this week as well it's it's like the relationships are used to get to a place of historylessness to see the historylessness that's already there but then there's always this tendency to see that it's, it, it is a perfect how they unfold but 
but I've had as well this tendency to go, well, you know, this could have gone a bit better. This as as if as if the script could have been shifted in any way. But it's like we're always at the point of opening to someone in in the perfect amount that we're capable of, and then it's only going to crack open d- deeper and deeper with these relationships, which ultimately. I found myself at the start getting into special relationships, but then quickly seeing the exhaustion of keeping up special relationships and seeing ultimately the only purpose of these like male to male, male to female was just to see through the the history of them because we built up these energetic condensations of what this meant. So male to female to me was partner competition, this, this and the male to male was competition. And then, the, and it's like, well, what's it like? And, I, and you actually shared something the other day, which was quite funny because I went through the same, I was going through the same course material, which was um, everything you see is the past. I, th- I think is, is, is the, is the phrase or something along those lines where like everything is perception and to see it without history is quite a, a dramatic seeing that it's very like a, I, I used to call it the newborn baby technique of like anything judgment any thought of of a person history is going to be learned or overlaid as thought so come into these relationships with a with a willingness to see them beyond the body of you know realizing anything i see them in a body is always going to be the past and what, what would it be like to just sever that link just for a moment was kind of really scary because to sever that link is almost a protective mechanism to, to remember who they are and how they are to you and what you can gain from them and what um and you know the, the dangers of this person maybe it's a social interaction like it feels very naked to meet someone without any remembrance of well really f- allowing yourself to forget all these pre-judgments you've made up is like going in without a shield and really what you're doing is you're meeting someone without a body i think in, in that in that place in the place where you neither of you have ever been separated and it feels if someone's not open to that as well, you can see them shut down. But in these deepenings, for example, it happened a few times where these meetings of beyond the body would happen. And I could just feel the boundary of the private mind, just like, well, the seeming boundary of the private mind just dissolving and then almost like reading thoughts. And it was like, okay, this is, I can see where this is with this heading because you are my mind and we share the same mind. Any kind of separation is just thought and history. So it's just crazy that I never thought this would happen to humanity in, the, in this quick, but it just seems to be like, like a, the, the steepness is crazy. Which, right. It's just like acceleration. It's yeah. Like acceleration for sure. Mm. Exponential. It's just like even seeing stuff about beings visiting. It's like, yeah, of course this is it, it's drip, drip, drip until, um, I don't know. It's just it's just crazy to see how it's unfolding. I think, and um, like like we've talked about before, we we act as a model for what's get, what's to come. And uh, this this deepening group, you know, there'll be there'll be different groups over the world, but um, using these relationships for the one reason of um, allowing these histories to really dissolve and the sameness to just be lit on fire and the set and the, and the specialness just to be seen through over and over again. It's like um it's just really beautiful to have that kind of group that that is willing to do that as well yeah. so how's the interactions post Italy like just with family and, and friends now that you have this context and what go, what's going on through those experiences so I've yeah so it's really interesting we go into this because I for some time I've been leaving leading this double life where I've started to notice how much I just didn't show people that weren't interested in spirituality, what I was doing over here and in, in, in all of this stuff. And a lot of people didn't even realize I had the YouTube channel and it's just starting to see that that was a uh, cope, like a defense mechanism because uh, maybe a, a mistrust in others to, to see that um, what was going on over here. But in this last week, there's been this, um, I think there's a lot of specialness in trying to keep that because of trying to keep, create an image of not being strange. I think I thought non duality was very weird. And so I kept that <laughs> apart. So going to Italy, like there was this moment where this person I've been sort of speaking to and friends with, I just like cracked open and explained all of this spiritual stuff. And in that moment, she also just cracked open um, because it's almost as like the energies were so bombarded up in this kind of like a barricade that, 
I think when you when you pretend to be someone you're not, it's instantly sensed by others. So when one of you opens up, the other one opens up and you sort of invite this opening. And that's what happened on this holiday. And I've just noticed how much I was holding back in the private life of Matt Garrett over here. And now there's just this like uh, courage just to like talk truth and 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 show and hide nothing and just full exposure to everything. So that's the path I'm on at the moment, which seems to me maybe the next three or four weeks before I moved to America is just seeing any kind of stuff I'm hiding from family or friends. Cause there was a lot of arguments and stuff with family about witchcraft and all this stuff. And that's what kind of, I must've chosen the script to, to why I should hide it out of shame. But now it's like, I don't know, it's just too exhausting to hide spirituality and non-duality now. And I'm, you know, I'm inspired by this group, how open they are. And I, I wondered like what why I ever hid that but it's inspiring to be around you know people like non-dual devotion so that's just really what happened to post Italy <laughs> nice. yeah, yeah. Well, that's beautiful too it's just yeah that perception of spirituality or perception of non-duality is like the weirdest people or have yeah, like the weirdest <laughs> posts it's just like oh wait, I don't where, yeah. are they on drugs or something or it's <laughs> like positions on drugs and all that so it's like beautifully like witchcraft and yeah. And all that just has to be seen and, and transmuted with uh, with all that. It's, just, it's in the unconscious. So even like cults or um, shared purpose, like you have to be married, you have to have children, you have to save up for pension and save up for retirement. All these ideas of how life should be is just, just drawn up. And similar over here, where it's just going through interactions with family and friends. It's like they're on seeming a different journey, but then right it's only one journey right there's only one of us so it's like it doesn't really matter what is being said during those interactions it is that love it is that vibration that we we uh emit for the whole field and i think that's that i wouldn't maybe responsibility is not the right word because it's just like it's almost like a divide if you say oh we're responsible for all of us but in a sense like, it is kind of responsibility in the sense that we're in this modeling phase of the whole mind which is us so we really can't really like yeah we can't be dishonest with our energy anymore because it just hurts too much it's just too painful to to be not true to ourselves and mm. our others the ones that we love and the ones that are actually receiving this message it's like giving them that courage and faith to be themselves to go through this process together and it's just a nice feeling to, to hear these reflections and be with others within the proximity and just, it just keeps on going like deeper clarifications realizations and that support just builds that faith builds and these connections and the attachments to what we may have felt as something we really held on to even with family like that can be let go of and the relationships towards family could be even better and you don't even have to really see them or these belief systems of how these connections should have gone it's just somehow spirit just guides all of it it's, it's just that that flow of letting go and i think that's kind of this next transition it seems like with letting go and just allowing spirit to really replace everything with the connections of deeper purpose of of truth really just all all we want is truth and, and love and we could have different names for it, but it's a sense of well-being. It's a sense of why we are here in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's, it's what you said. So what, what was really important to see is like, it's not that anyone even really chooses to become authentic or to follow. It's like inauthenticity becomes so claustrophobic and, heavy that there's no choice but to either let go and step into truth and be completely exposed of who you are and and that means in these relationships or, or to continue to suffer to really try and create these kind of um barriers and, and shields and, and and stuff and like you said it's it's like this is just going to open deeper and deeper and i think you can become surprised at how deeply you can let go, especially of things with family and how much you can show and open to them in a very maturing way and a forgiving way, rather than like I'm further along the path and you just need to, you know, whatever. It's very much, we're all on the same thing. And 
teaching by demonstration is they can sense always straight away this change in energy like even if you think that like on the outside we're I remember going around family and thinking on the outside, the mask was, yeah, everyone's fine. And I'm just going to do my spiritual journey inside and, and not use them as fuel and forgive them. And they can tell in an instant, the energy is just off. If like we try this separate thing. And when you start to forgive and see that every single image on the screen was put there by ourselves as a mechanism for extraction, and you forgive these images, you really, you're forgiving yourself. And then there's that ease that comes and they can sense it straight away um in these seeming bodies um, i think that's just the way the spirit works is you can't leave any kind of stone unturned you can't really have like enlightenment over here in north carolina but then back here i'm gonna um be a person self like it just it's holographic it, it doesn't matter where you are you're always going to be either choosing truth or free or, or or fear like love or fear and yeah i think to hammer home what you said it's like you can really open in ways you never thought you could to family and friends and and people that once deemed maybe um, argumentative and things where like just there was friction and stuff. There's so much room for forgiveness in these relationships. And I think that's where like the gold mine for uh, the extraction is, is in relationships, especially the ones you don't want to have. You know, I read a poem today. It's like the conversation, the courageous conversations by definition are the ones you don't want to have by david white and it's like that just summed up facing things that i didn't want to face i didn't think i could in friendships and families and relationships and romantic relationships are intensely in in um insane for for extraction so uh, whether one avoids them or goes towards them there's, there's still extraction no matter what <laughs> so yeah beautiful yeah. Kind of, everything mm. gets used up right it's just the the transportation the alchemy the fuel for for real mint everything turns to gold you know what I mean? it's like all the positions we had about sex relationships drugs whatever whatever's in the the unconscious has to be brought up and yeah like what you said about this about kind of that position that ones may have including just like if you're on the path it could be easy to start preaching or getting irritated but just like you're doing that to yourself right so it's just like that will easily be like humbled in the in the sense that spirit will always guide that back into just correction and alignment towards true non-duality or true like purpose true smoothness of the field and it feels like this the polarity is like the the frictions they have to be looked at because we can't evolve or we can't like collapse like tension touch will collapse part like we, the tent if the tension is just staying in tension then nothing really like flows so it does have to be weighted it has to be relaxed into and, and collapse that's with mm -hmm. any any interaction of of the field and it, i guess from here too it's just valuing the interactions more and more like it could be going into grocery stores are like or having a call customer service or going to the events it's just like every little micro position can be seen more it's like what what is there uh where's the rigidity and it feels like even with this whole transportation journey it just more and more comes up and it's perfect it's like the, going back to the capabilities part it's just like we all have a part to play and it's just and it's just beautiful to see just the extraction of every point and you could just be sitting and hearing these words and picking up things that will help with their shared journey it's just a nice like perfection of that higher intelligence of, of spirit is guiding everything it is literally perfect it may not feel perfect it may not feel real i mean it may not feel easy during surfacing but there's always like a silver lining and those hard conversations are the most rewarding conversations mm -hmm. and that was a beautiful poem too if there's mm -hmm. those things we don't want to look at has to be looked at because it's actually really what we want to look at higher self wants us to look at it with that yeah yeah it's like the demons that we think we have the substance of them is like the bliss every time. Like it's just the same fabric. It's it's just a different way of looking at it. And 
you said this a good thing that's come here as well that resonates is like valuing um the extraction methods more and more whereas before it seemed a distraction from the path like oh i don't want to socialize with them today because they're going to make me feel like this and it's like first of all projection onto the images that's straight away is almost already giving the power away but secondly thinking that's a bad thing was such a hindrance because i used to think like you know sitting on this couch and being in silence and ah peace and but that was just letting them lie dormant and it's it's funny because coming to north carolina like the transmutation of course gets ramped up the extraction was ramped up and i I remember i can't remember who brought it up but it's a perfect metaphor of you know like a captain like a mad pirate on a ship like pointing straight ahead in the storm and like just laughing his head off even though everything's just turning to shit like this is what was perfect like it it encapsulated the feeling inside of like getting thwafted about everywhere but knowing this is exactly what we're all after and we're, we're all like in the same storm that is we're allowing to ramp up but there's just this kind of not humor but this kind of like of course this is going to come up we are valves on humanity we're letting up ancient ancient beliefs in separation and contraction it's going to feel strange but you just value that way more as before the storm felt like you were getting wet and damp and a distraction from trying to stay dry and silent but it's it's like you say everything we thought we'd find in kind of sheltering from the storm is found you know really embracing the storm and seeing that really what you want is to get completely engulfed in it because who you are or who who's holding on then gets kind of burnt up in the storm and then you're left with the bliss that we thought we'd find from avoiding it so it's like just like we just keep saying that we say the same thing in different ways but um that's the whole point of the devotional transmutative life is true the true transmutation where you're not like feeling something to get rid of it you've just seen very clearly that the resistances and the hidden sensations the very alchemy of that is the conversion to freedom you can't escape it and then you just use it like fuel and it's like this is how you get you know higher you say higher and higher but it really is like a the dream does get happier and happier but it also i find is like the lows i wouldn't say the lows are lower it's just because there's no judgment it's just the, the intensity gets gets more intense but then you're off into like bliss land and, and whatever but it's it's all about just context that you know ultimately the, the the images are there to allow this conversion to take place over and over again over and over yeah, like the the show, the image was uh, Captain Jack Sparrow just like just doing yeah. his thing and just like going through the the ship. But I think, I mean, you can make that analogy. It's just we're on the ship together, and it can be a really serious, intense ship, or it could be intense but still funny and easy, and just a lot of love, a lot of laughter, a lot of joy. And yeah, like those lows have to be cherished too it's like i feel like the greatest joys have been the surfacing too it's just like how ridiculous the ego thought system can make life to be and the ship uh, that connection towards even just riding with everybody it's just like everyone's on this ship it's like all the animals are on this ship and the you know your families and friends your past lives like everything metaphorically of course just going into this direction of we're going somewhere it doesn't even matter where it is but we're there is a end point like there is an end to this dream and there is this um focus really it's just because there is an end so it almost feels like the purpose the dedication of the fo- all these attributes of devotion really just stems online beautifully just organically as well too it's not just like a train ride to somewhere just to get from point a to point b it's like there's all that stuff in between where we can look at for revealment and it's just a a grace that will allow us to keep on going and just the one pointedness of that ship one pointedness of the training just keeps on getting more direct and yeah it's just it's nice to hear all these like clarifications and what others can can harvest out of this it's just it's just joyful in the in regard of like the heart opening into purpose and devotion because i had no idea about what bhakti was or devotion and these like words kind of having like a like a aspect of wait i don't know about devotion it sounds very like you're you're surrendering your personal life 
wouldn't in a way it is, but in the sense it's surrendering in the sense of your false self so that the direction of truth can be really seen and the devotion of, of light and love and the connection towards you, like your true self as one mind can be seen and connected to all the points of, of the mind in the sense of devotion that way always opened up something and it felt like maybe the first month or something seemed new but there was like a resonance it was like keep on going keep on going to see like the deeper tools of devotion that shared awakening is the only thing that makes sense shared purpose is the only thing that makes sense there's like no greater fulfillment like you could have a successful career a family beautiful children whatever but these are just material items it's like why are we here always comes back to the purpose like why are we truly here what is the highest for all of us not just as a randy body or matt body or for an organization it's just like what is what does god want and god is As you were saying the, the the word finality um i love it because it's 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 really the end of something that never really began it's it's just a beautiful like if we can both come together like this that we are and both admitting that this is a finality it's not like a teaching where is kind of an endless cycle we very much admit that it's it's the end of a belief of something ever happening of any kind of stepping away from truth um like just the, the the attempt to separate um it really there is a finality to this where because there's so much resistance in this belief of like endless just trauma work or transmutation that's going to go on for you know until we're just very peaceful beings and like um we all know it as an ancient memory like so brightly now that this it, one day like there i think there is some grief in it because if if there wasn't some kind of I wouldn't say grief. I would say like there must be an addiction to this belief. And there is because otherwise it would be seen to have never happened and it would go. But you can tell how we chose the script to veil enough duration to learn what we needed to learn and, and deepen. Like if I wanted to deepen the love, um, I feel like I came into this incarnation. The script must have been because the wisdom felt like pretty heady masculine it kind of was there but the the intimacy and the love wasn't as there so i must have written a script to like come here and get that really deepened because that's all that's deepened in these last few things it's like it's almost like coming into the world without already with without the sense of that self and it just didn't never felt right but then the love was still just so missing and vacant and like um it was just so empty of of intimacy and and opening to resistances and fears and so for this incarnation it's been really cool to see that because now there's this real heart opening where where it's like the wisdom hasn't really been learned it's just kind of kept stayed there and it's been or it's been like revealed but but i can tell the incarnation is for each person is like for some i can see this like the person i met in italy had this amazing like connection with um like intimacy very open and i was kind of like inspired by just how in touch with kind of that but maybe the lower chakras you could also say you know the earthy ones this this real sense of like um aliveness of the body and ultimately i've always felt like maybe a slight bypass to just feel like in with the crown chakra the 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 third eye whatever, whatever. i don't even know much about these chakras but i knew i was always going up into the freedom of of getting out but there is also this love that wanted to really um open um so yeah it's just cool to see how different body minds have different lessons to be learned i could tell from from her and there was this real interest in maybe more the of the masculine approach where that hadn't really flooded in yet so it's almost like you meet people who are like um perfect matches in um kind of a puzzle way of extracting from each other what is possibly being learned and they're the really beautiful holy relationships of of mirroring what maybe someone's resisting and repressing within them their oneself because that's why it feels so good because when you forgive another you're forgiving yourself when you release you're basically re allowing up and up a part of yourself that you basically denied so it's yeah i can't, I can't remember what we're speaking about 
uh, the finality but uh, mm. of everything and um i find yeah it's, it's beautiful to actually just admit that this isn't going to go on forever like there isn't there's there's other realms there's other uh, what, what's it like to not have a body like this is this is what this is where it's going and to be one mind to be one being as a collective is it just feels so like it's coming like yeah. <laughs> in a duration way but it's like i can almost you can almost sense like the whole of these humans will one day just be seen as one as, as they already are but we will admit that the private minds will all just collapse into this one mind um mm. or, or the belief in private minds will collapse yeah yeah it's perfect and i love that reference too it's just like the the bodies that seem to fill up or contrast like the things that may seem to be lacking or need work on whether it's chakras or certain relationships like male female dynamics and that it's like perfect it's like as soon as the interaction goes like the subjective experience can be judgmental in those critical processes and just memories of you know association with mom or aunts or female appearances relationships partners like whatever it is it brings it up in the sense of connections towards like folding it back in into the heart space but yeah there it seems there could be a bypassing through those especially like the, i feel like the sexual chakra the chakras like the lower yeah. chakras that like yeah. you said and especially this work is just beautiful because I think Nanda Bhushan does a great job. Even doesn't even talk about chakras, but there's like intuitive knowing and sense that it gets balanced by every interaction. It really draws it up into the field to be looked at, and we really have to look at it. If it's not looked at, it'll just hurt even more, and it'll always the higher self will always bring those reflections to um, to adjust, and the adjustments are, are being made. But it's also that. The intuition training the awareness training that we all are being received it's just like it doesn't even matter what is being said from the other body really it's just that connection towards the the spacious learning that is being seen through it's just like getting in tune to that is is very powerful and healing for both minds and as soon as it becomes like a talking like a forceful energy it's like oh i feel for you or I know what's best. I know what's helpful. Like that just gets reflected back and you can't do that. Like there is a, yeah, there's almost like a art or something. There's like a stepping back, surrendering mm. process that happens. So yeah, beautiful. I think that was a great example to, uh, to look into and just interactions here too. Like what's happening in the house is just different bodies. It's just like, it seems to be, yeah, that contrast points of like, taking responsibility that I'm dreaming them for my own awakening and my own healing seemingly for the full field, but it is, it has to be like gone through, like any aversion has to be seen. And yeah, that goes back to that speeding up process of wanting to, to uh, see it, but even it's okay. It's like, it's already going to be seen to be, to be seen in a way that's like perfect for capabilities and yeah with more points like especially during deepenings like that just gets amped up where you really can't hide like you literally can't hide the shadow the unconscious parts have to be seen and it's just it's just it's really beautiful like looking back and kind of excited about future deepenings and how us modeling it it's it feels like the the language gets clearer and clearer and the, the energy of it gets clearer and clearer so it's just mm. yeah it's nice to sit back and see how it's unfolding as we're both dreaming the one dream we're dreaming it yeah the deepenings for sure as well i have the same kind of fascination with them and, and watching them each one and i've only been to one but like the ones i've seen online and this one and the next one is pretty wild i think <laughs> how it's going to unfold and that's just part of the script as well. And I think just to bring it back, like you said, with the chakra stuff, I think the, the thing about non-dual devotion, it's so beautiful. That is, it is the most encompassing, I find. Like it it really touches on a lot of things, which maybe the language isn't like, right, sh this is chakras, but ultimately there's there's no bypass really. It's very hard to bypass when the when the core message is nothing is left unseen and everything resolves. It's like, yeah, there could be maybe room and I'm sure language will grow and I can find this teaching is definitely gonna 
refine its language and maybe expand its language in different subjects like the lower chakras, whatever, maybe I, I don't know how this is going to go. But for me, you brought up the word the sexual chakra for me has been such a healing thing because it was almost like no energy was even going there anymore. It was almost like for some time there was just this because maybe there was a blockage there, an emotional blockage around the sexual chakra or maybe the ones of like the will, like anger, there was a lot of repression of authenticity. I could sense like there was this living up here in these kind of like, yeah, the heart and wisdom and kind of a heady kind of way, but there was a real blockage in the sexual chakras, maybe an intimacy thing. There was this um, kind of like a bypass, maybe like there was spirituality. So maybe I just didn't need the human stuff anymore. And ultimately then I saw that you could, you didn't have to go back to these lower chakras and, and then go back to being human. They're almost to be explored as a way of let's say sex for example the most healing sex is not like me body your body we're animals going at it like that's just like how it used to be but this is almost like when you when you when you allow it to be a healing thing of of seeing through hu the human bodies and seeing the energies that that come it's like i was blocking myself so much in that in that realm like I spent years of just just avoiding sex even for, for some periods of my life because I was going through this heady stuff, which probably needed to to unround. And but then ultimately to come back to that and just see any kind of like hindrances, so like emotional blockages through intimacy and just relationships, even friendships and 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 exposure to to really being vulnerable. I think in that way, and ultimately to ha to keep those blockages in place, kept the feeling of being a solid human alive as well. So I thought avoiding sex was in some periods of my life was good to you know get away from being human, but to, to avoid it is to make it more real so going back to that and resolving some of the the anger stuff in the will and and the way that I suppress my voice sometimes in social situations I was seeing I was making it more real by avoiding it and suppressing it and to go back to that yeah ultimately it will open and, and it flows and it allows even you know everything to become more aligned I think I was becoming very top heavy in where the energy was going in the chakras and I think it's just nice to get that going but Coming back to non-dual devotion, of course, there's emphasis a lot on 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 the wisdom and and just this, but there's also this non, which maybe isn't less talked about slightly, but yet it's completely encompassed by the teaching that there's just nothing to be left unmet within the relationships which are used uh, in yeah intimate ones, and you know ultimately everything becomes impersonal anyway. So it, it's not really bypassed in this at all. It's just there's only a danger if someone in themselves comes to the teaching is still bypassing within themselves, even though the teaching is saying, you know, there's a way to open up to everything here. Um, but language will help out in, in the few next few years. And so and I think. For yeah. Sure. yeah, definitely. Just the honesty of whether it's inquiry or just interactions like these, it's, it shows that, the, the capability is always with the interactions and just the, the container of who we're talking to. I mean, we're only talking to ourselves, but in the sense of what well, we're talking about, like sexuality or something, like the resistance of there making it real. It's like all these positions, we go back to positions on it's bad to do this. It's like, it's more spiritual to do this. And that personal inventory really helps with the whole impersonal stuff it's just like i mean we take sex for example it's just like well is this going to affect my awakening if there's masturbation or looking at pornography or like positions on older younger bodies like didn't even know this was in the psyche or something and it just has to be seen as well this was just a dumb position that i didn't see but it's just it's literally societal in a way it's just like everything has to be seen through it and there's no right or wrong it's just positions it's just it's like i think someone was going into like bondage or something or animal sex like if there's a position there then it has to be seen as equal as well too so it's like it's really beautiful there's this honesty of what what is actually like being said and what are the positions we don't even know that we have like rigid belief systems of spirituality about sex or money or whatever it is communities food and it's it's beautiful to be 
like talking about it because it's so hard if you just do this yourself like as a body just trying to journal it yourself it's like oh i had this today and um this came <laughs> up for me it's like there's no like expression or you can't really like receive it so it's just trusting that process trusting the connection on on the yeah just the whole guidance of spirit and just the the trust of other bodies along this this process points along this process and it always is so much more rewarding and so much more more blissful and and that light just really disperses everywhere it's just it's yeah it's just really nice to um be part of it that honesty part i think like that's been coming up just like you really do have to be super honest about every little aspect too especially in the writing and these exposure sessions and um, interactions and even if there is a sense of you want a romantic or sexual relationship it's like being honest about those beliefs like your beliefs on spirituality even or like that has to be yeah like a priority because if it's not then a lot of the same patterns can really just come up and not that that's wrong too because it'll just be folded back in so mm -hmm. yeah like I love how you touched on yeah the chakras and just the language being refined because it will be refined and just like more and more understanding with just the reflections of these interactions yeah it's like the accessibility becomes more but it doesn't dilute the message at all it's almost just the language about certain let's say sexual stuff i think ultimately the skill of non-duality and the simpleness of it is so clear and that's why everything can kind of be seen in that way but like you say language may may, may help that as well but come back to the honesty and i think like you say with the daily writing when you're in your own head almost and, and, and it seems to be in your own head it can become like still quite personal but even to talk about like being vulnerable about things i think as well it helps like with a male to male because that's a similar thing and sometimes male to female and female to female but in this way it almost just breaks apart the extra layer of resistance which is on top of some um stories that come up where it shouldn't be feeling this whereas if you see that like there may be someone else going through a thing where they're blocking the sexual sh sh uh, chakra or their their fear of intimacy or maybe because ultimately we all no one's ever had their own trauma that someone else hasn't like experienced because it's all just one mind anyway so whether you're dealing with um, a certain thing you're kind of feeling it on behalf of humanity anyway and you're giving others a chance to go through that same path of maybe their conditioning is quite similar to you so like you say every choice you make for love is going to impact anyone leading in that same way so it's, it's, it's such a beautiful way of looking at it rather than i'm going to deal with my suffering do my journaling and only i will benefit you don't benefit you do benefit because you are the one self but everyone benefits in the same way it's the same way if it's not shared it's not real so you, you sum it up great that i think we've come to this balance where yeah there, there's this beautiful like um wisdom coming through non devotion but there's also what it offers like on a sunday the exposure sessions with the shamaya projects things like this like you can see the power of it because it almost like um really accelerates the non-judgmental aspect of what arises and suddenly you just see like they're just images in the mind you can go as deep like you say with the animal sex like let's let's go as deep as we can with what is usually a taboo or and and see any kind of resistances any kind of guilt any kind of like you know sexuality if someone's maybe i know some people have messaged me saying how like they've hidden their sexuality maybe they were gay for some time and you know just just the vulnerability to say that and see that other people going through the same thing it's funny to then see that ultimately this comes back to one concealed vibration of everything all these stories really just i am separate that's what they're really mm -hmm. shouting but they come with all these different images and so we can only really deal with the flavors of where they are as well so ultimately they all just dissolve back into that one concealed vibration but if you have someone else dealing with a flavor of conditioning that you are it's so helpful i, I found anyway because it it just makes you feel less alien like that you're dealing with something it's like um really accelerates the forgiveness because if, if if you're willing to forgive that part of yourself then you've inspired me as the same self really to allow that to be forgiven within me whereas otherwise it becomes this kind of like personal heroic journey and it's just like mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's funny too because like even like gay thoughts or something like on the path it's like if you're one it's just like the love is everything so it's just like even identif identification it's like gay or transgender it's like that becomes that that's a whole separation thing too but then even in the process of having gay thoughts or having 
murderous thoughts, sexual thoughts, or bondage thoughts. <laughs> and a lot of things, it's like, it's not personal because there's only one mind. It's just like, it's just, as you said, just images on the screen. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think it's it's beautiful that you said that there's, there's this, it's not personal and even the daily writing, it's just, it's just for revealment. So we need that as a, as a great, like container for it. Exposure is a perfect thing to do and that non-judgmental of these images are just meant for for us, for the revealment of that vibration that gets matched through it. So, mm. yeah, I don't know if maybe we could end with just a few minutes of silence, and or if there's anything else you'd like to just communicate. No, I think, and I think no, I think that's beautiful. I think um, we've touched on some some topics just as tie it together it's just this, this element of um kind of exposure but also the honesty and i think the courage to speak to align with truth and to really go through all the different aspects of you know the, a feeling of just get just touching into to what it is if someone's listening now maybe they are actually really integrated with the earthy and the, and and the, the chakras down here but then maybe coming into this and realizing that maybe they resisted in the wisdom and, and, and the crown chakra so just really noticing this kind of and having the flexibility to just follow the guidance of spirit and see what wants to be looked at because like we mentioned earlier the conversation you least want to have is is the one that is the most powerful whatever it is and that's really a conversation with yourself and, and what you need to look into so yeah i think we touched on some really cool stuff so it'd be good to um yeah what time is it maybe like a few minutes of just silence just to really ground back into the body and stuff
Alright, well. Alright. It's great being with you, Matt. Lovely to see you. Beautiful. Very healing, actually, this conversation, it feels like. So I appreciate you and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Likewise. You have an amazing day. Speak soon, brother.